Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Modern Mystic Radio Show. My name is Mystic Sarah. We are on A1R Psychic Radio, the world's number one radio network. Okay, so I will be introducing my guests that I have with me today. But before I do, I just want to remind you very quickly of how you can get hold of me. You can do that through Facebook um, under Mystic Sarah and Modern Mystic. Um, You can also get through to me on my website, which is www.modern-mystic.co.uk. Um, And I'm also going to announce very quickly that within the next sort of three to four weeks, I will be moving to the Shropshire area. So if you're listening and you would like a reading, that is where I'm going to be from now on. Okay, so without further ado, let me introduce my guest. Um, I'm really excited to have her on. She's a very, very busy lady. She's a psychic medium. She's based in the UK, plus she does work in the US as well. And her name's Kate May. Hi Kate, how are you? Hi, yeah, good, thank you. Thank you for coming on to the show. I know that you are incredibly busy. Um, So tell me just a little bit about how your psychic journey started. So did it start from childhood or did it, how has it developed? Um, So I just had an interest really. I, I haven't got lots of wonderful stories that lots of people have said when they're a little girl, they did this, they did that. I haven't got any of that. It literally just started as an interest. And I, at school, I would uh, predict people's star signs for them. I would work out their personality. So the astrology side of it came in as my strongest interest. And actually, it was only last week I bumped into a load of them. And, uh, and they said, we're not surprised you're doing this because at school you're always into the astrology <laughs> part. And um, and I had uh, when I was about fourteen, I had a little job down our local here doing astrology readings for this couple that were mediums, and so that was about thirty years ago. And as it turns out, um, only a couple of years ago, I found out that uh, the people I was working for were my current partner's parents. Oh wow! Dad. Yeah, and I didn't. We had no idea about it at all, and. She said that I was with her in Bournemouth and she said she used to work down the pier. I said I used to work down the pier. When she described her booth, I thought, I recognise that. And she said, um, oh, we had this little girl working for us, our friend Ron. And I said, well, I was that little girl. That was my <laughs> uncle. So that was really bizarre. So, it's, yeah, it just started off as an interest, really. Anyone that, um, in the family, whenever they would talk about people passing over, I would just get really sort of goosebumps. My nan, I would often talk about her mum that had passed when she was younger, and she would say she would feel her. And I, I just couldn't get it. Um, what do you mean you feel her? So I think that sparked it. Um, and then my mum had a few experiences. I didn't realise at the time, but my uncle and auntie were healers. And my auntie who worked in Australia, she or cousin, sorry, she was uh, a medium as well. I only found that out a couple of years ago. So it's been within the family, but I was unaware of it. And then, do, you, um, do you think that's common, though, to, you know, when you, you've got that ability to keep it quiet? Uh, I don't know, really. Nowadays, I think nowadays it's much more open. And the world that I'm in, it's, it's 24-7, and it's huge here. It's absolutely huge. But I guess back then, if, you know, many years ago, it probably was a little bit more hushed up. But I think now with all social media and, and just the way of the, the new age world, I think it's a lot more acceptable, and people are, are much more intrigued to, to learn it now. You know, there's lots of people that sign up to all the courses now and the classes. It's a lot easier to advertise. It's not too difficult to get people in on this. So um, I think now it's probably a lot more open than what it was, it, yeah then it probably was a lot more unusual really and kept a bit more quieter so tell us about the last 10 years um from my understanding it's been quite an action-packed time for you yes it's been really hectic and none of it was planned i i was doing therapeutic therapy that's what i thought i was going to be doing and one minute i was spray tanning and the next i was doing readings and it got so busy, I didn't know if people were coming in to be t- spray tanned or having reading. So I thought, something needs to give. I need to give up something. And I chose to give up the therapy, the beauty therapy. So the last 10 years, once my children were able to be at school, uh, I started to develop a lot more. I started to join a lot of courses, a lot of classes. I had already done, I had my first tarot deck at 13. Uh, so I kind of played about with it from quite a young age. Um, but when I got to 30, I decided to enroll in some proper classes, learnt the cards. Well, I think when I got to about 34, I thought, well, I'm going to do this a bit more seriously, joined uh, an advanced class. 
and then from there there's there's another story how I actually got into doing it um but from there it kind of all opened up lots of doors I gave up my full-time retail as a retail manager I gave up that job to have the children which gave me a chance to be at home to do all, all of this spiritual work and it's just yeah I just signed up to everything and just carried on and carried on so the last 10 years I literally went to the opening of an envelope like any event any fair I said yep 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 got my name out there, got regular customers, and now I'm in the position where I don't have to do all, all the little fairs. I can pick and choose the ones that I want to go to, and I've got a good, steady flow of customers now. So it's grown quite quickly, and because I love it, it's not been too much hard work either. Absolutely, and I know what it's like when you have to live and breathe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, you, you're you with the Psychic Sisters, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, um, based in, in, in London, is that right? Yeah. Um, and you also, you work in the UK and you also work in the US, is that right? Yes, yeah, so we'll go to the US a couple of times a year, although this year we've, we've decided to only go once this year because it's quite tiring travelling and then trying to fit the kids in and everything and I've got a shop now, so this year we just decided to go once. Uh, but yeah, with my partner who's also a medium and a trance medium, so we travel across there and uh and do readings out in california as well do you ever work together not properly we when we do things out there we do uh, one-to-ones but he's in one room i'm in one room that's that's about as close as it gets to it he does uh, separate dance demonstrations and separate mediumship demonstrations um so we don't work together on that i think we've done a couple of workshops together we have done mm-hmm. a couple of um psychic workshops together but he's been doing it, he's older than me, so he's been doing it a lot young, a lot longer than I am. Do you think you ever will work together? Yeah, I expect there will be. <laughs> I expect there will be. He'll probably say, no, nope, can't see that. But yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm sure we'll do something at some time. It'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? A couple doing it, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so tell me a little bit about the Psychic Sisters. How did that come about? Throughout my whole uh, psychic career there's been so many coincidences and that that was one of them um so I used to work on psychic I, used, I was working with some people to do with psychic cruises a few years back and I had the contact the contacts of uh, Jane from the psychic sisters Jane Wallace so I already had her email address um and then about a year or so ago a friend of mine started working for her and I just said I'll get us a job like you do and she said, oh, it doesn't work like that but if you've got a contact for for her already email her this was in the february and then it got to the june and i, I all the time it's been in the back of my head but i thought oh, i'm not really ready to email i'll do it next week i'll do it next time so in the in the may or the june i was in america uh, and i was by the pool and i just thought oh i feel like i need to email her so i emailed her and said um i, I can't remember what, exactly what i said but on the lines of you got a job and and then at the same time I emailed my friend and said I've just messaged Jane to see if there's any vacancies and she said oh my god you must be psychic she's literally on her way to LA now and that's where I was um, and she said and I've literally just messaged her to tell her that you're out there so this was like four months after we first spoke about it very random so I then re-emailed Jane and said I've just realized you're in LA I'm in LA do you want to meet up for coffee so we did um, and then from that yeah, I started working there about two months later. Wow, and how long have you been working there now? Uh, a few months now. Yeah, a few months now. Not too long. <laughs> I love it. The girls are lovely. It's good. Wonderful. It's a wonderful opportunity as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, you read for people all over the world. All over the world. It's, yeah, it's a re- really good opportunity. Yeah, really lucky. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you, um, you're a psychic development teacher. Mm-hmm. as well um yeah. so am i um now i saw something yeah. on facebook today and i know you shouldn't believe everything that you see on facebook <laughs> and i don't actually i don't happen to agree with this but i just wanted your thoughts mm-hmm. um i mean i teach psychic development you teach yeah. psychic development and i saw a post that said um mediumship cannot be taught you are born as a medium what do you think to that well, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was born a medium. I think your soul has an idea about what you're going to be doing and mm-hmm. um, you can develop abilities to it. I think that some people would be better and it might become easier 
and not everyone can be taught how to be a medium but if you've got a strong enough passion and a strong enough interest and you're prepared to put the work and the commitment and the time into it then I guess it's possible really um, but can you be taught to be a medium you can be given the tools to develop yourself uh, and you know um, as far as that goes I think your soul would have an idea if that's meant to be the pathway you're going to be Hold on to that, whether you like it or not, I think. Well, I mean, I believe that we are all born with the same abilities, but some people use them, some people don't. Um, I mean, you find a lot with young children that they are incredibly intuitive, incredibly psychic. It's very, very common. Um, So the feeling is that it, it can be because we all have the ability Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I think if, as long as you've got the interest in it, um, I think anything is possible there. But some people, you know, it's not meant to be for everyone. It'd be boring if we were all the same. So, mm-hmm. you know, some people, it's not their pathway. It's not what they want to do. But I, I do think if you've got a strong enough interest and you're prepared to commit yourself, then anything's possible. And how do you work? So I predominantly work with the cards, the Rider Waite tarot cards, um, but I also work with clairsentient and clairvoyance as well. And then it it tends to be a layer effect. So I I usually start off with the cards and then I find that sometimes spirit will connect during the reading. So I'll give off a little bit of whatever they've come in for and then I might drop back into the psychic, into the cards. Um, Sometimes if the energy is there, the spirit is strong, I'll be able to link straight away without even using the cards. But I'm so used to my cards, and, and that's what I like, that fallback on it. And the cards, you'll always get the cards with me. If you get the uh, the mediumship, it's a bonus. So Wonderful. So I layer it. Um, so it's you use a variety of um, yeah. different tools and abilities yeah. uh, within yeah. the same reading. Audience, audience clairvoyance. Um, I do have crystals around. I do use a pendulum. I do use um, mainly it's the cards and the medium strongest areas. Well, we're going to we're going to see how you work in a moment. Um, but before we go on to our last call, um, could you just let everybody know um, how they can get hold of you personally? Should they want their own private reading with you? Yes, my website is www.katemay.co.uk and pretty much over Facebook, it's uh, similar to yours, actually, it's Kate May, Modern Day Mystic. Um, You can find me under just, I think, just Kate May or or just type in Modern Day Mystic, but uh, either one, Kate May or Modern Day Mystic. Wonderful. Okay, let's go on to our first call. And we've got Michael from Romulus in Michigan. Um, Hi, Michael, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, now to the show, Michael. Thank you for coming in. Um, I'm going to pass you over to Kate. Uh, for reading. Is there anything you would like Kate to, to look at for you? Do you have a question for her tonight? I'm just wondering if uh, my dad is trying to communicate with me by any means in the spirit world. I can't understand what he said. Um, is his dad trying to communi- uh, communicate anything to, to him at the moment? Is that right, Michael? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. And your dad's in spirit, yes? Pardon me? Your dad is in spirit? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I don't know, I haven't got a link with your dad. Um, but what I would say is look out for all the little signs around yourself to do with him. So if there were things that he enjoyed, if there were particular pieces of music that he liked, if there were certain activities that he liked, just look out for him giving you little symbols and little signs to let you know. You might find that you get having a dream when he comes um comes um, through to you in a dream as, as a way of connecting to you. You might find you pop the radio on and there there is his song or something connects to, to you from him with that. So for me, I would be looking at all the signs. The mediumship it isn't as easy as just uh, picking someone out the air and saying, yes, here it is, da-da-da-da. That tends to be more on the psychic vibe. 
and you'd be picking up a lot of of your own memories as well. and then the mediumship would come in slightly different so it's I'm, it's not an on demand um area there but if we if you feel that some might be just washing up washing the car doing things everyday things and all of a sudden you might think about your dad out of the blue that has been coming around look out for signs go with your if you just feel that you uh, some a little if you build up if you think about your dad him coming close to you you really need agents answers you can just sit quietly and just think about him and, and just you know talk to him off with it but i would be looking at all the little symbols and the little signs um maybe it's a butterfly a particular bird looking at that they can manipulate the energy to be to show themselves to be around you and look out for dreams as well does that make sense to you michael yes it does okay um is there, is there anything else you would like to, to ask while you're... Um... Okay. <laughs> right. Um, well, hopefully we will have a uh, through um, in a moment. Um, but it was, um, it was very interesting, actually, um, your, the point that you made um, in the sense, you know, it's not a dial-up service. Um, and we can only get what um, we can only get. Yeah. God willing, you'd get the right person come through, and it'd be lovely. But uh, and maybe mediums that don't use the cards, those that are, are much more experienced, me maybe they can do that. But for me personally, it doesn't work like that. I get what, and I can't just you know obviously you can't make it up. And I know the difference if I'm working psychically and I'm picking up their energy and the memories. I know that feels when I've actually got a link with somebody. So I think it's important to be honest and tell people that actually what, what I've got is a psychic link here. This isn't your dad, but I would have known this and this and this. Um, and then you be able to get something come later on through it. So, you know, you've got, you've got to be honest, but it would be lovely just to be like, oh, yeah, I've got your dad. His name's Bob, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, at a whim, that would be great. That would be great. I think um, a, lot of, a lot of mediums would, <laughs> would love to be able to just tap in yeah. um, in that way. Um, it, it really does depend on um, who, you know, what, what's going on for that person. If it's Absolutely. the right timing as well. Absolutely. All the circumstances, lots of things in their life, in my life, in, in, you know, lots and lots of different things. Yeah. I mean, I know that it took um, my father, my father's passed now. He's been gone um, over 14 years. Um, but it took him about 10 years to come for a medium. Yeah. And there you know, are yeah. lots of different reasons for that. It could be that they're adjusting over there. Maybe the right medium wasn't available. Just like we like people and dislike people, they're going to like mediums and not like mediums, you know. So it could just be that uh, maybe the genuine one wasn't around at the time. Timing, who knows? I, I think there's a lot of questions. People expect mediums to know all the answers to everything. And there's things that you just we're not meant to know. It would just our brain would explode, I think, if we knew everything going on. So some things we've just got to be like, I don't know why it is what it is. But, you know, I don't know why that is. But my nan came through within a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. uh, my other nan took a good year to come through. Um, so is yeah. that is that through could come through for you or come through a medium? No, I see those are... medium. So I was really lucky. So how I kind of ended up getting into this, I was. I went to um, a toddler group and the I went I took a friend and I said I'm never going to go but I'll come go along with you because then you can you can stay and meet friends I'm quite happy with the friends I've got well I went forever and she never came back and within that I made a lot of, of the new friends one of the girls I got really close to because I was doing therapy she said to me would you um would you bring your couch and do lots of um do some treatments on on the mums while the kids are playing so I said yeah okay I'll do that and then I, she said, bring your flies in. So I brought my flies in and she said, oh, you do Reiki. I do Reiki. I've got some angel cards. And then I said, well, I've got angel cards. So between the two of us, we started just reading, playing about for the mums. And then before you knew it, we were getting booked once every three or four months for parties. And then we were going to get booked for every month. And then it grew and grew. But she was also a childminder and she was, she was a very good medium and she childminded for my eldest. So on the day that my nan died, 
um, I phoned her and I said, you can't, I don't want you to have my son today, but I want to come over because I need the company, but I don't want to be on my own. And the minute she just started coming out of all this stuff and she went past that three hours before. So I was really fortunate to have a child minor friend that was just a brilliant medium at the same time. Just, yeah, just lucky. Yeah, I mean, I, I know when, when he died, um, I mean, I got communication directly from him um virtually you know within hours of him passing but in terms of coming through a medium it took him 10 years but then again he wasn't he wasn't the sort of guy that would just like jump straight in anyway you know or yeah. bulldoze his way through and he'd be and, comfortable with you he'd be you know he might not be comfortable with those other mediums so that would make sense yeah absolutely yeah. Um, okay, so there was one thing I wanted to very quickly talk about, which is your business. You mentioned it briefly, so tell us all about that. So it's a lovely little shop. It's called the Mystic River Lounge, uh, based in Cosham in Portsmouth. And it's a coffee shop, spiritual coffee shop, and we've also got crystals and books and incense and gifts. And then we have, we've got a, a separate room, which is what I'm in now. Uh, where we do our, our one-to-one readings, we do our meditations and our healing or therapies. That's, so that's a separate room outside. In the evenings, we have our classes. So the coffee shop converts into like a little centre. So we have monthly demonstrations. We have um, talks going on, psychic development, uh, workshops at weekends. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a hub for everything. Brilliant. We have lots of people coming in in the, in the day that want to, you know, it's become like a bit of a community hub really and it's it's getting busier so it's, it's good we're just about to do some youtube work with a, a tv production as well so there'll be new things that are coming up um from it but it's yeah it's like home from home it's lovely we love it here and how long have you um had had your coffee shop not long i work with my best friend paula be good to work with someone that, that you like that's always a bonus uh, and we've had it since last august so not 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 too long I think. Oh, it sounds really amazing. Yeah, lovely. Um, okay, what are your future plans? It sounds like you've had like a really jam-packed ten years. But so, uh, yeah. what are you planning for well, the next year or so? Apart, we've got a few things lined up with these, like I say, these YouTube channels and, and a few little bits of work. But actually, we're just going with the flow. The whole the whole place that we've got, the Mystic River Lounge, was never a dream. It all it came. Of the blue, everything just unfolded really easy for us. So we're I think we're just going to go with the flow. Really, opportunities pop up. Um, I'm a great believer that if it's meant to be, it's going to be easy. Anything that's too much hard work isn't worth doing. So yeah, we're just going to go with the flow and, and hope that it all works. Really, oh, sounds absolutely amazing. Um, uh, we are nearly at the um, end of our show. So if you just want to remind everybody of how they can connect with you again. So it's www.katemay.co.uk and on Facebook, Kate May or Kate May Modern Day Mystic. And the Mystic River Lounge is www.mysticriverlounge.co.uk. You can see the mystic theme that goes on throughout. Oh, thank you. Um, and yes, so that's the end of my show for today. And if you do want to get hold of me, you can do through my website, which is www.modern-mystic.co.uk. And through Facebook under Modern Mystic and Mystic Sarah. I'm going to wish you a good night. Stay tuned for some lots of lovely shows. And I'll see you the same time next week.